Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Satan Al Hassan. I'm the Associate Director of uh, Administration and Operations at the Africa Institute. I would like to first uh, start off by uh, thanking Zanzibar and all of Zanzibari people for being such pleasant souls. It's been really um, great being here for the second time. Um, I would like to thank the President of the Africa Institute, um, Hour al-Qasimi, and uh, the Director, Dr. Salah Hassan, for all of their support and the vision they have for the Africa Institute. And I would also like to thank my colleagues at the Africa Institute, Sara Majdi, Aisha al-Hamadi, Meghna, Kalvani, Ahmed Mustafa, Isra, there's so many names, uh, but everyone at the Africa Institute for all their hard work in making this possible. Um, Welcome to all of you for the second uh, conference titled Legacies of Race and Slavery in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, which is part of the third country focused season the Africa Institute organizes titled Thinking the Archipelago, Africa's Indian Ocean Islands. Um, before I invite Dr. Salah Hassan to say a few words, um, I just wanted to give a few notes about the conference and the structure. Um, the conference is being live streamed on YouTube, so if you have any family, friends, colleagues that you would like to attend and are not in Zanzibar, please do share the news with them so they can tune in through the Africa Institute's YouTube channel. Um, each speaker has been allocated 20 minutes to present, um, and presentations will be followed by discussant remarks and then a Q&A with the audience. Um, I will be the timekeeper for the presentations and I'll be sitting right there front row. I don't want to harass you, but I'll have some signs with uh, the amount of minutes left. These are them, so please keep an eye out. I'll actually sit here just to avoid the angle. Um, and I would like to now invite Dr. Salah Hassan to say a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, shukran uh, Satan uh, and uh, dear colleagues and guests, Assalamu alaikum. Um, from the little I know, Habarigani, Karibu, Sabah al Khair, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I wish to welcome you all as director of the Africa Institute, and I also wish uh, to welcome you on behalf of Hur al Qasimi, the president of the Africa Institute. Unfortunately, Hur uh, is not able to join us today due to conflict with her schedule, and uh, she expresses her regrets for missing this gathering. She asked me to convey her greetings and utmost gratitude for all the participants and attendees. We are, of course, very grateful to all of the conference participants for taking the time not only to travel from many far destinations to attend this symposium, but also to prepare special papers to deliver at, in person. Our symposium today, Legacies at, of Race and Slavery in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, is the second of four uh, symposia dedicated to the third edition of the Africa Institute's country focus season, uh, which is titled, as Sotan mentioned, Thinking the Archipelago, Africa's Indian Ocean Islands. Following the inaugural program, uh, Reimagining Mobilities and Immobilities in the Indian Ocean, which took place during the fall of uh, 2022 in Sharjah, this event continues to highlight the many facets and forces that shaped Africa's Indian Ocean dream through the lens of Africa's islands. The Africa Institute uh, hosts the country season as part of its annual initiative to explore one African country or a diaspora community through a range of scholarly and public programs. This season is organized uh, in collaboration with very leading scholars in this field. And I would like to mention the names, Jeremy uh, Pretschold, uh, professor of history at the University of California, San Diego, Ruaya Mustafa Abu Sharaf, professor of anthropology at Georgetown University in Qatar, and Uday Chandra, Assistant Professor of Government uh, at Georgetown University in Qatar too. So please allow me uh, to express my deepest gratitude to Jeremy, Ruqayya, and Uday 
and please join me in giving them a round of applause and I ask them to stand so the rest of the people to get to know them. Please. <laughs> Thank you for the, your uh, dedication and for articulating uh, the concept itself and also deliver it as we see it now in execution. I also wish to convey my utmost gratitude and thanks to Sat'an Al Hassan and to Sarah Majdi Abdul Karim. Please, Sarah, I know everyone knows you, uh, Sat'an. <laughs> And I also really want to say a special word for these uh, two, because these are the people who joined me when I was you know, appointed to start this institute. These are the first people to join me. There's no other people in the, in the office by then. One person who left us very early. So now, three years uh, or four years after the initial decree and establishment, we can boast with almost 14 faculty, uh, fellows, a you know, vibrant program of, of postdoctoral and senior fellowship, and more than 35. Am I wrong or right? Our staff, and a really uh, what I would call um, a dream team. Also, I wish to thank the rest of the staff of the Africa Institute who joined us here, uh, which is the communication team, and it's really also a truly sophisticated dream team. And I mentioned them by name, Magna. Wherever you are, if you can just, so people can get to know you. Aisha Al Hamadi, you can see her energetic movements throughout this conference. <laughs> and then Ahmed Mustafa, who joined us, joining us actually on, uh, you know, through Wi-Fi or internet from, uh, or long distance, I would call it, from Sharjah, and he's following closely this. These are really, when I mention Dream Team, I, I, I really mean it, because I just want you to look at our social media, look at in our Instagram, and look at our websites, and look at the press releases that they issue, and look at the follow-up with the news of all the faculty highlighting it, and, and which gave us really a big boost internationally, and people get to know about the Institute. Uh, there are many people also worked on this, people in the finance department, people who drove our colleague to the, to the, uh, uh, to the airport, so they, it's a whole dream, uh, sorry, it's a whole teamwork that uh, we ought to uh, recognize them. I'm also very, very grateful to at least uh, have among us uh, two colleagues on the faculty whom are very happy that they join us. In the early stages, there is Professor Sabiti Willis, who is going to present here, and Professor Emery Kalima from the Congo, who also joined us uh, about a year or two ago. Um, so I just wanted, because I know that is some of you, uh, and I hope I won't bore you, some of you have attended uh, the first iteration of this uh, season, uh, Mobility and Immobility in the Indian Ocean, and I gave a short presentation for the African Institute. But for the benefit of people who are not there, I think it's very important for people just to know a little bit about the history, and I promise it will be very quick, less than five minutes. This is just really a short PowerPoint presentation about the Institute and its history, and I wish just to say that is, uh, a lot of people ask me uh, why an Africa Institute and why in Sharjah of all the places? Of course, people have got accustomed to European hegemony and Eurocentrism that African study can be in the boondocks of Ithaca, New York, like at Cornell University, or could be in Northwestern, <laughs> in the outskirts of Chicago, or in London and other places, but why not in Sharjah? So my answer has always been, why not? <laughs> Uh, there are many reasons to say, just the proximity to the continent and uh, the, the history, the long history of interaction and movement between the two. But, but there are more, there is more history, which is interesting how many of these small places, as uh, you know, uh, uh, Edouard Glissot used to say, is actually more you know, complicated history than what we assume. Uh, there was a conference uh, on Afro-Arab relations uh, just shortly after the Arab, uh, so, sorry, the Israeli-Palestinian uh, or the Arab-Israeli war, and in the you know the era of you know kind of solidarity between Africans uh, and, and Arab, uh, there was a conference that was organized in Sharjah in 1976, uh, uh, basically uh, organized by. Uh, 
His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasimi, the ruler of Sharjah, who invited three scholars who happened to be Sudanese. Um, and that's not the reason that I became the director of the Africa <laughs> Institute. <laughs> it's really just things kind of became full circle that I realized this history actually after I actually arrived in, in Sharjah and read about it. Uh, the conference was organized by the late Muhammad Omar Bashir, who was a political scientist and a well-known professor who taught me and taught many people perhaps in this room. Uh, and then a, a, a writer and a diplomat, Jamal Muhammad Ahmed. And the team was headed by Professor uh, Yusuf Fadl, who are really, were really blessed that he's at age 92. And he's now with us uh, in Sharjah after he escaped <laughs> safely from the quagmire of the war uh, in Sudan. And we also, by meeting him, we discovered so many things. For example, we, we saw the papers of that Conference of Afro-Arab Relations, which is in December 20, sorry, uh, 1976, were lost. We couldn't get any trace of it, that he actually had the whole collection. And believe it or not, printed and bound, but it was, of course, on Ronio and extensive, if some of you would remember those days. <laughs> So we are now happy to announce the fact that we finished actually editing and having two versions, Arabic and English, and they will be out soon for people actually to get to know that history. That conference was attended by many people who rose to become very important scholars, from Ali Mazroi, who people from this region know him very well, or Hisham Sharabi, who is a very well-known Palestinian scholar at the town, and many people, even representative of liberation movement in Africa then, were also participant among many, many people who became later on. We have actually documents and films of that, and I'm pleased that at some point we will be actually editing them and put a film on the conference. So this is the newspaper, the day of the conference. Sorry, that's the, that's the place that uh, part of the municipality of Sharjah that came to be the Africa uh, Hall. Uh, from 1976, there is an Africa hall there. And it's still today, when I stand in front of it, which has been renovated and, and rebuilt, people stop still ask me, what is the Africa hall? And they, they just want to know why. What is Africa doing here? So you'll have to always reiterate that history. That's the newspaper, it had the day of the uh, opening of the, uh, the second day from the opening of the conference. And then, on this slide, you will see on the far right there, Professor Yusuf Fadl, and then uh, Sheikh, uh, His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasimi, and then uh, kind of uh, uh, images from the conference itself. And as I said, that place formed the genesis of the Africa Hall, but then also the building next to it used to be the municipality, and now it's an empty space after it was demolished and roofed somewhere, moved uh, in another place. So that, be, that, that space will become actually the building of the Africa Institute, which I will share towards the end. In a very short period of time, we managed to attract lots of faculty, and these are just uh, a group of them. Some of you may know, and they are from places like, uh, you know, Ethiopia, like Surafel, Bilal Omar from um, Jordan, Rachel from Ghana, Meg from the US, Elizabeth George of Ethiopia, you have Emery Kalima, Congo, and uh, uh, Aliyu from uh, Nigeria, and Christopher Lee from the US, Binyam, uh, Ethiopia, Faisal Garbagana. You could see a UN or a whole, uh, you know, global cosmopolitan place, Amy from Senegal, and Sabiti Willis from the United States via African America. Um, so, let me just show you more. We have a vibrant program of fellowship that we named it after very prominent scholars, and we struck a balance in gender, so there's no criticism in that area. There's also variety of people from across the globe. Tony Marosun, African diaspora, Professor Ali Mazroui, uh, Kenya, uh, uh, or Mombasa, whatever you call his destination, US. Uh, Okwe Wazor, a Nigerian curator who passed away uh, recently, and Fatima Mernisi, the very well-known Tunisian uh, you know, feminist uh, scholar. We also have a program for creative writers uh, named after Tegmula Olenyan, a great uh, Nigerian scholar who passed away uh, also very recently in 2019. He was a dear friend 
and a supporter of the idea of the Africa Institute, participated in the first conference. Then we also established a, a Global Africa Translation Fellowship, uh, and this is non-residential and open to anybody who wishes to translate something, and we always help with actually publishing it. And these are just the group of just faces of the beautiful, wonderful fellows who join us over the years, and you could see the variety of people that join us. We really wanted it to be a Pan-African, a very young, mid-career, and even a very senior people working in different fields. Uh, we also run fellowship you know, seminars and, and, and for faculty and fellows, and we do something very unique. I mean, I'm sure several universities now are doing this, which is to actually help fellows workshop their manuscripts by, in fact, asking them to invite or helping them to invite senior colleagues to actually join in and or workshop their manuscript, and we manage to help a lot of people get published and, and so forth. Our program is also rich, and we've, since even with the pandemic, we managed to do things online, and we learn a lot, and we're far ahead than many institutions in learning about this, big, thanks to our IT team. So we have scholarly conferences. We had, and this is another conference on African-American abstraction or black abstraction in the art. We've had this, the, the, the country focus season that I mentioned to you before, uh, and here. Uh, the first one was on Ethiopia, and then we did Ghana. Actually, all of these things, you can get rich documentation of it, and the publications of each of these conferences coming out uh, soon. And then uh, we also, these are just scenes from other conferences. Uh, our model of this conference is a two-way. Uh, it's not hegemonic, uh, uh, like exchanges with Western institutions. It's actually a conference that takes place mm -hmm. in Sharjah, but it's also in the country of, uh, that is we're celebrating and focusing on. And we normally, like in the case of the Indian Ocean season, we, f we invite scholars who are leading scholars in the field to design the program. We don't interfere. We give them ultimate freedom to design it in the way, either as a conference or a program of films and other uh, programs. And so this is what we're starting now. And this is the second uh, iteration of it here. And, and in every, for every season, I wanted to mention that we always invite an artist to kind of provide a design. So we have this kind of other intervention beside uh, the scholarly. And um, we also did performances in conjunction with the seasons, manifest, very well known if some, some of you are actually well versed in pop culture <laughs> and hip hop culture. Uh, we did performances, that is um, Lina Simon, the daughter of, uh, huh? Lisa, Simon. Lisa Simon, the daughter of uh, Nina Simon. Sorry, it's not as good as her mother, but it's okay. Don't, don't record that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. The performances, she's a great singer, but I'm, I'm just stuck with Nina. <laughs> the original performances, we performed a very well-known play uh, in Ghana, it's, uh, we translate it into English, and it's a publication that you'll have a sample of it here, and it's called the, the, the Song of the Pharaoh. And then we did exhibitions, year one, with the Ethiopia season, we did the photographic show of the, uh, the artist called Aida Moloni, and then she curated the show also in conjunction with that. Then we did also an exhibition of the uh, famous photographer, uh, Gerald Ananforson from Ghana, that is with the Ghana season. And then we do also uh, programs on cinema and talks and all, almost like short courses and symposia. And we started a program of publication, uh, a memoir of the Sudanese artist Ibrahim Salahi, another uh, book on the artists who are working on the issue of slavery and the return and then uh, Ahmed Mursi, a very well-known Egyptian surrealist. We started our own series, and we welcome you know, submissions. It's called Writing Africa, and it's issued in, in both English and Arabic. These are actually short booklets, small booklets, I mean. And the reason is also that sometimes these big, huge scholarly books are very intimidating to the public. So we decided that small books with that focused idea uh, should be published. We also have in Arabic, uh, some of you who read Arabic, we did the, um, 
the collection of a very well-known Sudanese uh, poet from the uh, group of uh, they call it Al-Ghaba wa Sahra. He's a major theorist uh, uh, who wrote, you know, essays, but also poetry. This is a complete work, published and unpublished work of it. Uh, and then a very good book that is submitted to us by a great uh, Sudanese historian on Yusuf Fadl, the person who actually organized the conference in 1976. But we do have lots of other publications. Then we started a referee journal. And with the help of Jeremy Rogaya, and today we managed to, to get this through the process of review, <laughs> the meticulous one, through uh, Duke University. And it is to their credit that we managed to get this. Uh, and then, unfortunately, we really hope to get that, because I know it's almost in print, the first issue of it. It would have been great to celebrate it here, but no worry, we'll celebrate it in Sharjah. But you can get it online uh, probably as soon as a few weeks from now. So, and, and the good thing is that all these, you know, series here that is of conferences are all going to be special issues, feeding into special issues uh, in this journal. And as I said, we always commission an artist to do the cover, but also to do a whole portfolio inside. And then these are just samples of the collaboration, and I hope I'm not taking too much time. Uh, we also have a bookshop, and we named it after Meroe. Uh, and not everything is Sudanese, by the way. A lot of people here may say, okay, this <laughs> is just bringing Sudan all over. No. <laughs> this is just uh, we're trying to get to an ancient place that has good writing, a uh, system that is undeciphered before, symbolically. So the book is about the Meroitic writing, and Abdullah Ibrahim may tell us if it's deciphered or not yet. But this is Harf al Mim, Abdullah, the Logan Marawiya. And thank you so much. But before you go, <laughs> just one few words. Uh, so allow me now actually to, to turn to one of the main goals of this symposium, uh, beyond the whole the intellectual goals of the, of the whole uh, symposium. Uh, I wish here, an, and on behalf of the uh, Africa Institute, to pay a special homage to Professor Abdul Sharif and to celebrate his remarkable scholarly contribution to the field of Indian Ocean and his intellectual legacy that have shaped the field and will continue to do so for many generations to come. As a disclaimer, I'm not a specialist in the field of Indian Ocean studies, nor am I an expert on the history of Zanzibar and its pivotal role and its complex relationship to the larger field of African history. Therefore, it's very hard for me to articulate in depth the contribution of Professor Abdul Sharif as an expert. Therefore, I'm glad uh, that such important role will be undertaken by Professor Enseng Ho, uh, Professor of Cultural Studies at Duke University, who is not only a dear friend of Professor uh, Abdul Sharif, but also a collaborator on many published works on the field of Indian Ocean Studies. Professor Enseng Ho, uh, is not able to join us uh, um, uh, today in person due to unforeseen circumstances, but we are glad that he will join us over Zoom. I don't know if you've seen him earlier, if you're in the room, we confirm that he's going to be there and he will just <laughs> take over soon. But allow me just to say a few words about Professor Abdul Sharif, who I came to know personally when he joined the Africa Institute as the Ali Mazroi Senior Fellow uh, for the academic year 2021-2022. I'm very grateful uh, uh, to know, uh, uh, my, uh, to be introduced to Professor uh, Abdul Sharif through my dear friend and Sudanese compatriot, Professor Rugaya Abu Sharif. Uh, and I'm grateful for the personal introdu introduction. It has been definitely a blessing in my own you know, intellectual, you know, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, sense or horizon. Uh, for the little I came to know about Professor Abdul Sharif uh, during his stay with us uh, at the Africa Institute, that his publications cover a vast array of scholarship that have shaped our understanding of the history of Zanzibar and Indian Ocean, its history, migratory patterns, architecture, cultural cosmologies, and artifacts. Professor Abdul Sharif writing on the less understood and social, social and political vestitudes draw our attention to the hybridity 
an infusion of world patterns and processes that challenge the representational discourses on the Indian Ocean and on his actually also native Zanzibar history and politics. For example, his formidable analysis of race and class in Zanzibar and the diverse narratives of the revolution of 1964, he uncovers that through this, he uncovers events that have many nuances to impart on the problem of Eurocentrism and hegemony. Uh, and its prior text on societies that named under, uh, that are actually came under European hegemony and domination. Today, it is hard to miss uh, the impact of his work on the generations of his scholars in the humanities and social sciences, the spanning anthropology, history, architecture, and political sciences. So thank you, Professor Abdul Sharif, for being part of the intellectual community of the Africa Institute and for enriching our life uh, or daily even life uh, during that period uh, of its early establishment and, and, and for helping shaping our intellectual course as we move forward to accomplish our goals. So I will stop here and I thank you and I hope I didn't take too much time, but it was just necessary to cover this. So thank you so much. <laughs>